when I signed up to compete in the 2024 Pirate Software Game Jam 14, I had zero experience making video games. I've only ever watched game development from a distance, but I've always wanted to try it. Uh, about a month before the Game Jam started, I decided to start practicing making games in the Godot game engine. I made a version of Pong, a version of Breakout, and I made my best attempt at Space Invaders. I pretty much just copied those original arcade games, but I was able to learn a lot about the basics of game development from doing that. By the time the jam started, uh, there were over 7,000 people signed up to make games. When the game jam started, it was announced that the theme would be It's Spreading. This theme could be interpreted in any number of ways. Spreading like a virus, or a fire, or spreading like butter or jelly. Before the jam had started, I was considering making puppets for the characters. After doing a few doodles, it occurred to me that my interpretation of the theme would be spreading joy. Uh, the puppet that the player controlled would spread joy to everyone in the game. After a few more doodles, I felt like there needed to be some reason for spreading joy. Uh, this is when I realized I needed a monster that is trying to spread sadness at the same time the player was trying to spread joy. So I had my idea, and here's how I got started. My experience so far with game development is making paddles and spaceships that the player moves back and forth. My first test for the game jam was to test out using Godot's 2D character controller. I figured out if I just created a polygon for the player and made a floor for it to collide with, uh, the basic character controller was taken care of. Uh, it could jump and react to gravity. Since I had the idea of making my main character a puppet, I also wanted to see what things would look like if there was a wall covering the bottom part of the puppet, as if there was a puppeteer just below the screen. Once I felt confident with the basics, I felt like it was time to type up all my ideas for the game. I wanted it so the player could move the character into the background or the foreground, so I decided to make the game in 3D. I started out by making a 3D character controller, but I limited it to only move left and right. I created a two-frame animation of the character walking with some temporary artwork. I figured out how to flip the character sprite horizontally when the character changed direction. Inspired by Kermit the Frog, I wanted my puppet to spread joy by throwing his arms up into the air and yelling, Yay! as he ran around. Um, I created one frame of animation with his arms up in the air and bound that ability to a key. Also, I made it so that if the player was overlapping a villager when it, it was in the yay state, it would change the villager to a happy version of the villager. I created a progress bar as part of the user interface and made a joy charging station out of a box. If the player was touching the charging station, the progress bar would increase and therefore the, the player's uh, joy meter would go up. The door teleporter was more challenging than I anticipated. Uh, the idea was that when the player stands in front of the door and presses up, the player would teleport to another door. So far, I was using area collisions to decide if an object had entered or exited another object's area. I didn't know how to check to see if a player and the door were overlapping when I pressed up. Here's the solution I came up with. When the player stands in front of door number one, it sets a variable equal to one. When the player steps away from the door, it sets the variable equal to zero. So that way, when the player pushes up, I check to see whether the door teleporter variable is set to zero or it's set to a number. If it's set to zero, I don't do anything and the character stays where it is. If the variable is set to one when the player pushes up, I know that they are in front of door number one, so I set the player's position to be equal to the next door and make the teleport happen. I create a few temporary sprites in Photoshop to build a mock-up of my sadness monster. Uh, similar to the player character, I set the sadness monster up with a 3D character controller and collisions. In my game, I created a monster teleport system. I set up the sadness monster to travel in one direction until he touches a monster teleporter, 
and then he is moved to a teleporter on the lower level and his sprite and direction are flipped horizontally. In the final game, these monster teleporters will be off screen, so it seems like the sadness monster wanders off screen and then turns around and continues moving across the next level. In the same way that the player makes the villagers happy, the sadness monster will make villagers sad when their area 3D nodes overlap. I also made some purple puffs of smoke that the sadness monster leaves in his wake. This particle system that it emits helps get across the idea that it is spreading sadness across the world. Later, I'll make the villagers emit the same purple smoke when they are sad. Here I'm testing out all of my game mechanics so far. The villagers start out with normal emotions, then the sadness monster comes through and makes them sad. Meanwhile, the player charges up the joy meter by standing next to the charging station. Once he's fully charged, he activates his joy ability, and then he cheers up the villagers, making them happy. To build a puppet, I first start out with a pattern. Um, here I am tracing the patterns onto the back of uh, faux fur. For my player character, I modified a puppet pattern from projectpuppet.com. The best way to cut faux fur is by running a razor blade across the fabric on the back side of the fur. If you cut the fur with scissors, you'll end up cutting both the fabric and the fur. Uh, using a razor blade ensures that the fur stays long at the edges. I use both a sewing machine and a needle and thread to do my sewing. For large straight parts, the sewing machine is best. If several pieces of fabric meet at a weird angle, uh, sewing by hand is the only option sometimes. Using a sewing machine always leaves a visible seam. I typically would try to hand sew as much as possible to hide the seams, but since I have a limited amount of time for the game jam, the sewing machine speeds up things considerably. Sometimes if you know the right tricks, you can do some complicated things on the sewing machine. Like for these puppet hands and arms, I've traced out the arm pattern on a big rectangle of fabric and folded it over before putting it through the machine. This way is easier to hold on to the fabric. I'm not trying to feed like a tiny little arm through there. Once the sewing is done for the arm, I trim off the sides and turn the arm inside out, just like as if it was an inside out glove. Here's part of the puppet building process that failed. I wanted to make a nice internal structure for the arms with some beads and a foam hand. Unfortunately, the hands and arms that I'd already made out of fabric were too small to fit this new internal structure that I'd made. I didn't really have time to go back to the drawing board, so I just left the beads and foam hands out. It'll be okay if this puppet just has floppy arms. Here's the player puppet all put together. I made his eyes out of a foam ball that I had cut in half. For now, I've only pinned the eyes onto the fur. Since I'm only going to be shooting video of the puppets for a few hours, some parts can just be pinned together. After the game jam, I can spend some more time gluing or sewing on the facial features. For the villager puppet, I decided to wing it. I didn't use a pattern. I just made a a tube by folding a piece of fabric in half and sewing it along one side. I cut a black circle of felt out for the inside of the mouth and sewed it into the orange fleece tube that I'd made uh, for the villager puppet. This didn't turn out how I'd hoped, so I set it aside and hoped that maybe I'd be able to salvage this later. I wanted my sadness monster to be a round purple ball of fur, so I found a pattern for a ball online. Instead of completing the full ball, I sewed two half semi-spheres of purple fur for the top and bottom of the head. I sewed black felt semicircles in for the mouth. Um, this head shape is similar to Grover from Sesame Street or Animal from the Muppets. Here I'm cutting foam wedges to be the skull of the sadness monster. I curved these around and glue them to the plastic semicircles that I cut out to make the mouth plates. The foam skull will help give the head some structure and help the purple fur keep its sphere shape. For the villager's eyes, I stuck on a couple of Velcro dots. I wasn't sure if the foam teeth were going to work out, so instead of gluing them directly onto my puppet, 
I made sort of monster dentures with some pieces of felt that I could just tape into the monster's mouth. I cut a ping pong ball in half for the sadness monster's eyes. He has some pink felt and some black ribbon for his eyelids and lashes. Once the puppets are built, it's time to shoot the video. Because the main player puppet is green, I shot his footage in front of a blue screen. The other two puppets worked well in front of a green screen. I only had a few motions to get per puppet, but everything still took a full day to shoot. For the player's main walking motion, I didn't have any direct control over his arms. I just let them flop around at his sides, and I used a take where it looked like his arms were swinging properly for a walk. Each puppet had to be lit differently. I spent some extra time getting the purple rim light just right on the sadness monster. I also made sure that the puppets' faces were at about a three-quarter view, so you can see both of their eyes. Their personalities are more readable from this angle than if they were just in complete profile. Once I had all the takes that I was happy with, I transferred everything to the computer and started editing the footage. Not only was I going to have to remove the green screen and turn the puppet videos into animated sprites, I was also going to have to find a perfect loop in the video to make the sprites have looping animations in the game. In a few instances, I wasn't able to find a perfect loop for the sprite animations, so I had to use a grid warp in After Effects to morph the end frame back into the beginning frames. One thing that was helpful for turning video into sprites was a template in After Effects. I nested one composition inside the other and laid the frames of animation out as a grid. So any video I drag into the first composition would appear as a sprite sheet in the second composition. I made templates for 8 frames, 16 frames, and 32 frame sprite sheets. Once I exported my new sprite sheets, I was able to easily swap them into the temporary animations that I have been testing my game with. You'll see some bluish gray wall textures in the game now. Um, I quickly painted these up in Photoshop. I already have some invisible cubes to teleport the player from platform to platform, but now I'm going in and placing in a door texture. I color-coded the door so if you walk into a green door, you exit from a green door, etc. In the game, I wanted to make it almost impossible to make all the villagers happy, because as you are making them happy, the sadness monster is also making the same villagers sad. I thought it would be a fun hidden mechanic if you could also make the sadness monster happy. Once he becomes happy, he stops terrorizing the villagers. In fact, he starts spreading happiness to the other villagers that come in contact with him. So I'm creating a progress bar that appears above the monster once you start filling him with joy. He doesn't instantly become happy like the villagers. It will take the player two or three trips to fill up his joy bar before he stops spreading sadness and starts dancing and spreading joy. Uh, here I'm quickly coming up with several blocks of text that will tell you how many villagers you made happy and what percentage you've made the sadness monster happy. This end screen will appear if you achieve all the goals or if the timer runs out. About eight hours before I submitted my game for the game jam, I started recording sounds, so I didn't have much time to do many takes or make sure the sound was nice and polished. I mostly used my voice to give dialogue to the characters. I hoped I would be able to make it so that the villagers would say random things instead of just repeating the same phrases over and over again. I initially set out coding a random generator system that would pick different sounds when I discovered a random sound player already existed in Godot. Instead of Linking one file to an audio player in Godot, you can link an audio stream randomizer, and from that you can link as many sounds as you want, and even give each sound file more or less weight depending on how often you'd like that sound to randomly be played. This turned out to be pretty handy, and I used it for all the characters. This saved me at least an hour of work, and that precious extra time was appreciated as I was getting close to the deadline for submission. The music is probably the weakest part of this project. I didn't spend much time on it. I bought some samples and tried to do some sort of electro swing music. 
I don't have experience doing that sort of thing, and I didn't give myself much time to work on it. There are some remixed old-timey musical tunes that play when the player stands in front of a boombox, uh, but these were just samples that I purchased and didn't really do much to before putting them in the game. And now let's take a look at the final game all put together. Here's the start screen that I created. Uh, I've got a couple um, animations of the puppets here. In the lower right hand corner is a, a, an animation of the main character scratching his head that I didn't use in the final game. Uh, I've got an instructions button. Um, I noticed that when in other game jams that people had done, I noticed that sometimes I had no idea how to play the person's game, so I wanted to make sure people playing my game had a really good idea so of how to play it. So I, I basically explained everything I could on this screen, and then here on the main start screen I also included some controls. So let's start the game and see what it's like. And I'll tell you some things that I haven't told you yet in this video. So. And again, I put this fill up your joy meter by dancing in front of the boo box. I just wanted to over explain everything, but I animated a little uh, cartoon jute box that emits some um, some notes and then the, the meter fills up in the lower left hand corner. So first things first, in order to beat the game, we have to make the sadness monster happy first. You can hear some some of my my great um, voice acting here. So the sadness monster is a little bit more than halfway charged up, filled up with joy. So I'm going to go back up and fill up his joy bar a little bit more. He's filled up all the way. You rock. And he'll he'll make all those villagers on his level happy once they touch him. So I'm gonna fill up my joy meter again by dancing in front of the boom box. And I'm gonna make all these guys in the top row happy. My joy meter's running out. I got him just in time. The sound effects when he goes through the door are just my mouth, but that's one of my favorite sound effects in the game. So the sadness monster is making the villagers happy on his level up there. You can see he just made one happy. And then I'm gonna get the rest of these guys. You're awesome. Thanks, buddy. And we just won the game. Congratulations. You helped spread joy to all the villagers and you even brought happiness to the sadness monster. Your kindness has saved the day and made the world a more joyful place. Working on this game jam was a lot of fun and I'm excited to see what people think of my game. In a future video, I'll do a little bit of a post-mortem and I'll say what people thought of my game and we'll see exactly how my game ranked in the game jam. I'd also like to talk about some things that I think I could improve in the game and maybe some things that didn't work out. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about how I made my game and how I somehow managed to make a game with puppets in it for a game jam. See you next time.